Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to talk about one of the consequences of Donald Trump's refugee ban that has so far been ignored. The day after Donald Trump issued his executive order to ban refugees and all citizens from seven Muslim-majority countries, four children from El Salvador landed in Miami International Airport. It is a short flight from El Salvador, but the children had been waiting a long time to come here. In 2015, they applied to come here through the Central America Minors Program that was started in 2014 as a safe and legal way for a limited, a very small number of children from Central America. After submitting to DNA tests, screenings, and a long application process, they were finally given visas and they were on their way here. However, after landing at Miami and passing through the Customs and Border Protection screening and on their way to their connecting flight, they were stopped and pulled into a secondary inspection. For six long hours, these children were detained in a cold room without food or water. These children had, to do, had done everything right and waited a long time to flee a very traumatic situation. They came here and their first experience was to, to be treated like criminals. This is just one example of how Trump's hasty, harmful executive order is undermining our American values. It is just one more reason why instead of rewriting it, and as he says that he is doing, he should rescind it altogether. But of course, these children are the lucky ones the fortunate few who got a chance to come here legally. Many of my colleagues will recall that in the summer of 2014, thousands of children from Central America arrived at our southern border. Those children were fleeing gangs and violence. Many of them turned themselves in to the Border Patrol. They were not trying to sneak in to our country. They were asking for asylum. They were asking for relief and protection. We knew that if we were going to stop kids from making that dangerous journey to come here, some of them walking over a thousand miles to our southern border, that we would have to tackle the root causes that compel them to leave. So the leaders of Honduras, El Salvador, and Guatemala, with some help from General John Kelly, came up with a plan to bring some stability to those three countries. And Congress, working on a bipartisan basis, provided some financial support. But even as we make long-term investments in the Northern Triangle, we need to deal with the fact that children from these countries still need our protection in the short term. That is why the Obama administration created a few programs to help a very small number of those children. Those children did what we asked them. They didn't come across our border. They didn't cross Mexico. They waited in line as they were told. Even if waiting in line meant staying in harm's way. Because of Donald Trump's executive order, those children now face a very uncertain future. Lost in the media coverage of this order is the suspension of the refugee program, blockage of these vulnerable children as well. I am glad that the judge has stayed the order. I hope that the president will respect the judge's order. But more than that, 
I hope that the president will take a real look at all the harm that he has already caused for so many people, including so many innocent children. I hope that he puts an end to his cruel, counterproductive executive order once and for all. Thank you, and I yield back.